doing these subpoenas, I mean these depositions. Okay, but that's usually the function of the court reporter to do that. I get that, but, but it's also within our limit to do so as well, and we've, we've, we've... The point is that a court reporter is not a witness to the case. If you tell me right now she's not going to be a witness, that's a different thing. But if you're telling she, me she is a potential witness to this case, and you, you already called her at the Williams Rule hearing as a witness, then it would be inappropriate for her to be involved in this process during the deposition. I couldn't agree with that, sir. Um, we've added on the subpoena that she would be present. No, there's been no objections. Well, I would have loved to have contacted you and told you this, but apparently you didn't provide your contact information to my assistant. She said she asked you for your phone number and you didn't provide that. So I didn't have a way to tell you that before today. Well, then we'll have to reschedule because I need someone in here to do audiovisual. I have a job. <laughs> I, I had to not go to work today. I don't work for Walmart anymore. I mean, I, I understand. <laughs> and I have no problem with the court reporter obviously handling the deposition and typing down everything set. So my question to you is, are you willing to move forward with that or have somebody else document this deposition? You can do well, it personally. I, 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 I plan on having an, a person here present to audiovisual. If you're telling me that my wife is unable to do it because she might be a witness, then I'm going to have to find somebody to do that unless I'm able to do it myself. All right. Give I me mean, one you second. You could just set up the camera and turn it on whenever you start, you know, just like you have it now. So I, I, can run, I can run the camera then with, without my wife, is that what you're saying? You can do it, yeah. You are a part of the litigation, your wife is I don't is see on. a problem with that. Okay. I mean, you also have a camera on right here, right? Yeah. Yeah. You were recording us <clears throat> with a device around your neck as well? I didn't say I was recording, but I have a camera because I have it on the depositions that I'm to audio-visual record. Okay. That's fine. So, are you kicking my wife out? Is that what you're saying? I, if that's the way you want to put it, then yes. All right, well, Am, I'm going to have to handle this on my own. Sorry. Um, I'm not sure if there's anything I need in here, but you might as well just leave this. You know what I mean? In case there's something that I need, thank you. Did you feel like taking a bottle? And you'll have to wait outside. You can go inside walk you up. <clears throat> and I'm trying to get a good angle like so that like we can both be in on this. Um, but that's why I was hoping to, you know, have the seating arrangement a little differently. Is it possible that I could sit over there just so I could be closer to the person I'm speaking with? Yeah, that helps you. Right? Yeah, sure. Thank you. <clears throat> solemnly swear or affirm that the testimony you're about to give shall be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. I do. Thank you. Yes, hi. Good morning. Morning. My name is Lee 
by Jonathan, and I'm here to ask you some questions as the dependent and the representative for myself. Okay. Uh, would you please state your name and spell it for the record? Sharon Hayes, S-H-A-R-O-N-H-A-Y-E-S. -E and were you an employee at Walmart in Haines City on the date of July 1st, 2020? Yes. And what capacity were you working? Assistant manager. And I, I noticed on the report it said there was another assistant manager, Jason. How many assistant managers were there? In this, that worked in the store? Yes, ma'am. We have, um, I think, 11 assistant managers total. And then Jason was a um, co manager, he was a step above me. And is there a reason why this Jason's not listed as a witness? Do you know? I don't know. Right. Um, would you please provide me with a description of the events uh, related to the defendant of uh, that day at Walmart on July 1st, 2020, of uh, what happened that, that you're aware of? Um, there was a customer that came to me, I was walking the store because at the time I worked in online grocery. So I was walking around the grocery side of the store and um, a lady came to me and said that there was a gentleman that had a camera and was looking up a little girl's dress. And I asked her where and she told me it was on the bread aisle. So I got on the radio and I called Jason and I told him to come to the bread aisle because there was an issue. And then I went over to the bread aisle. And the girl was standing here, and the gentleman was right here, bent, kind of stooping down, well, you know, sitting on his legs, basically, not, you know. And I stood back and I watched, and I thought that I saw his left hand move over like this with something in his hand. And could you please provide a description of this this individual you said was a girl there? Oh, I, it, it was, she She was a younger girl. I, I really, I mean, she was an African-American girl. I don't, I mean, as far as a description, I saw the back of the little girl. So you're saying that the someone, a customer approached you, told you to come, to the bread aisle, and when you arrived there, you saw the same individual that she was referring to? She pointed the little girl out to me. Mm -hmm. And you said this little girl was African American? Yes. In the bread aisle? Yes. Was this the customer's daughter? At the time, I did not know that. I, I knew it after the fact, but at the time, I did not know it was the daughter. She just said a so little the, girl. Okay, so so she she's referring to her daughter? Well, like I said, at the time, she just said it was a little girl. Uh -huh. I did not know that it was her daughter until everything was after the fact that it was all done. I did not know that this little girl was her daughter. Uh -huh. And was the little girl, what was the little girl doing? Was she by herself? When I walked to the bread aisle, she was. So you're saying the mother left the daughter? I, I, I don't know about that. I can't answer that question because I don't know why she was there by herself. Mm -hmm. And how old would you think this, this little girl was? I, if I had to guess, um, I would probably say maybe 10. I, I don't know. I, I, an estimate, I would say maybe 10. And was she wearing a dress? Yes. A, either a dress or a skirt. I don't know, you know, it was a, it was a dress looking thing, so it was either a dress or a skirt. And did you fill out an incident report? I filled out the reports that I had to fill out with the police department. But, I mean, were those, are those your reports for Walmart? Or, or I filled out whatever the police department asked me to do. You did whatever the police department asked mm -hmm. you to do? And do you have a record of those? No, I don't. 
What I don't get records of that stuff when it happens. What did they ask you to do? I gave a statement. And what was the statement? What I just told you. Did you see the defendant approach the girl? I saw the defendant standing, not standing. The defendant, can I get up? Fine, babe. I saw the, the girl was standing here and the defendant was down like this. Did you see the defendant approach the girl? I, I'm telling, what I saw was the defendant was right here and the girl was right there. And it looked to me as though the defendant had something in his left hand and moved over this way with it. But are you saying the defendant was immobile? His feet, was his feet in place? Just I, kind of like I'm right here. Uh-huh. So this little girl that you found out later was the lady's daughter was standing really close to the defendant? I mean, I would say this far apart. And the customer, who we found out later was the mother, she left her and went and told you. Yeah, she kept, she got me. I wasn't, I was, the bread department, the bread aisle was here, <clears throat> excuse me, and I was over here around the area of the meat department, if I'm not mistaken. I was over in this area and she came over there and she, when she saw me, she stopped me. And then I went over there because I asked her where and she told me and I went over there. Did you see the defendant at any other time? I mean, when the, the defendant walked away from there, when Jason, Jason came down the bread aisle from Grocery Action Alley coming this way, because I remember seeing him coming down and then defendant, I'm not, I don't know if he saw him, but then the defendant got up and started to go around this way. And that's when Jason followed. So after the customer approached you and you came over to Barrow, was that the first time that you had seen the defendant? Yes. And did you call 911? No, I didn't. Do you know who did? No, I don't. stated at the beginning that you were no longer working in, at Walmart? No, I retired from Walmart. Mm -hmm. How long did you work there? I worked for Walmart for 25 years. Uh -huh. I worked in that store for 15. Why did you decide to retire? Because um, at the time, the, with the pandemic and everything going on like it was, and my husband um, was um, recouping from cancer, and I did not want to take a chance on me getting sick and bringing it home and giving it to him was one of the main reasons I retired from Walmart. Would you mind identifying um, the scene in the bread eye on the video? What do you mean? I mean, if I show you the video of the scene at the bread eye, uh -huh. Would you confirm that that's you standing there, for example? Yeah. Could we show that? I, this is your deposition. Do you have it ready to show you? I gave you a copy of that. Yeah. Do we have uh, something to put it in? I don't. Because I don't either, because the police confiscated all my equipment and stuff. I don't have that with me now. Well, um, I know for a fact we're going to have to reschedule for um, the other depositions because there's no way that I'm going to be able to go forward uh, without being able to show these videos. I, I, I put on the subpoena for. <laughs> Uh, a device to be brought in. Did you accommodate that? No, I mean, I, 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 I specified on the subpoena that, that, the, that the police would have a device. You can't require the police to, to do that as part of your deposition? Well, I, I don't have a computer, sir. I go to the library to use a computer. Um, 
I, we don't. I, mean, I, I have to. We don't have to discuss that right now. This is yes, Ms. Hayes' deposition. Do you have questions for Ms. Hayes? Would you uh, be allowed that to con could I contact you? Why would you have to contact me? Well, because I'd like to be able to show you the video so that we can go over the scene together. And I don't have a device with me today. But then, where would I go to video to the, to see the video? That could be up to your convenience. I'd have to buy a laptop. Well, I mean, I would prefer to be in a setting like this when I did it. Yeah. We don't have to talk about this during the deposition. Do you have any more questions about her potential testimony? Did you see the surveillance? No. Why not? Because I didn't have to. So, did, did anyone see, review the surveillance at the store? I don't know. I mean, I don't know who reviewed it. And did you speak with anybody about this case? With the police department, the investigators. And could you tell me who they were? Their names? No, I don't. I do not know their names. It was a female I spoke to. Maybe was it Hannah Arm? I, I honestly, I honestly can't tell you because I don't know. I don't remember the name. Was that on the day of the incident? Yes. That's the one time I spoke to anybody about it. showing you an item that's marked uh, as an exhibit and discovery as an interview of yourself. You recognize that? Fairly inaccurately. Well, I mean, I would have to read the whole thing, but pretty much, I mean, I remember having the interview. And for the record, it, I assume you're showing her the six page copy of a transcript, mm -hmm. transcript statement? Ms. Hayes, you're yes. shaking your head. I'm sorry, yes. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Sorry, we didn't explain that. <laughs> Sorry, I just wanted the record to be clear on what he was showing.
That's my statement. And this is the whole statement? Mm -hmm. Yes. <coughs> and so this is the, the interview of yourself with Detective Hannah Armbrust Brewster on uh, July 1st, 2020. Yes. And it's Mark number Does this um, provide any description of the, the girl that you had mentioned? I don't see any. No, either. there's not a description. It's just a little girl. So you would say the detective didn't ask you the description? Whatever she asked me is in there. <clears throat> it was under oath. We did it in the um, loss prevention office in Walmart. And did, did, to your knowledge, do you know if this little girl was identified? Did, did anyone find out who it was? Um, they found out it was the lady's little girl that approached me. I mean, I, I, as far as I know, I, if I'm not mistaken, they got um, the driver's license information. Somebody asked, I remember somebody asking the lady for a driver's license. But I don't know what happened after that. That's just when I was standing there waiting. I vaguely remember somebody asking her for a driver's license or asking her name. And after you said that, that the defendant walked off, um, what did you do? After the in the, after the bread aisle, you said that the defendant walked off, said something in here. Jason went behind, went to after the defendant. I don't even recall what I did after that, but I know Jason went behind the defendant. And do you recall what the mother did after that? No, I don't. So you just didn't, didn't see? No, I don't know what the mother did. We, I, I remember we were looking for the mother in the store after it all happened. Uh -huh. We were looking for her in the when, store. When you found her, was she by herself? I think she was with people, I guess they were on vacation, if I'm not mistaken. They were on vacation from Pennsylvania or something. Um, and she was with other people that she, I guess, came into the store with. You guess, but did you see that? I'm, I'm pretty sure I'm seeing other people standing with her. And I remember her saying she was on vacation from Pennsylvania. If I'm not mistaken, she said Pennsylvania. How many people do you know? I, I, was, I think there was two ladies with her. I think two ladies and her. And? Not 100% sure, but I think it was two ladies. Was that the first time you saw them? The two ladies? Uh, as far as I recall, yes. When you had found the mother? When we found the mother, yes. First time you saw them. So you didn't see them in the bread aisle? No. When I went to the bread aisle, I was just looking at the little girl and the defendant. I wasn't really paying attention to what was going on around me other than that. Yeah. And one more time, I don't know if I asked, but what was the little girl doing? She was standing there at the bread aisle. Look, I guess she was looking at something to buy. I don't know. I mean, she was just standing there. Uh -huh. okay. uh, defendant has no further questions at this time. However, defendant would like the opportunity to show Ms. Hayes the video at a further time uh, so that we could schedule that perhaps. Okay, we can have a later discussion about that. I don't have any other questions. Um, do you wish me to discuss with the witness her rights in terms of seeing a transcription of this deposition? Sure. You can do that. Okay. Um, Ms. Hayes, as a deponent during a deposition, you have the right to review this deposition if it gets typed up. Um, that's either if the defendant or myself requests a copy for it to be typed up. 
That's called reading it, and you would receive notice from the uh, recorder's office letting you know that a copy has come up and you have the opportunity to review it and mark any potential errors in the transcription. And you, should, you can waive that right and not be a part of that. And if this case goes to trial and if you're called as a witness, you would still pro probably get a copy of that deposition. You just wouldn't have the right to check it for errors first. So do you want to be notified if that happens or do you want to waive that right and just get a copy before you testify? No, I want to be notified. Okay. Um, you just need to provide her your contact information. I'll need an address. And okay. if you want to write that down for her so that the defendant doesn't have your address, it's perfectly fine within your rights to do so. Just an address. We'll send you a letter if it gets typed up and let you know what it'll have instructions of what okay. you would need to do. Okay, that's all Thank I need. Thank you. Who's next? Well, I need to talk to Mr. Jonathan about okay. that. Okay. No, so just come right back in when you're done. What do you want? Um, so I know at least Sergeant Newell is here, um, but you had mentioned potentially canceling the rest of the depositions. So I can do Newell. I can do Rogers. Okay. Um, well, Sergeant Newell told me that apparently Officer Rogers is in the military and stationed outside of the country right now and not expected to be.